looks like there's a target 22 meters away. Yeah, that's all right. Chase that cable out. We'll get a snail trail of it. An idea how it's laid yeah. out. How you want to drag it back in the wire. Yeah, we definitely got some time on this on this dive. So okay, you take can it slow and steady. Zoom it. <laughs> I'm extended all, all the way out in the leash. Move? So yeah, maybe yeah. Bridge now. Twenty meters or something. Can we go 20 meters, two, four, five, please? Perfect. Can you put Atalanta over the hydrophone? Yep. That's what Megan's doing. It's a mark in the spot. Yeah. And we can just drive around in circles from there. And anything that we can't reach from that position is too far away. Yep. So given the current heading of the ship, anything we put down is going to end up, you know, a little bit to the southwest okay. or southeast. So this area, if that's good, probably our best bet. Okay. South, southeast of the hydrophone. So Dan, that was just Josh is saying they're on the radio whenever the RV's ready, just give them a shout and they'll start getting ready on the crane, but they're kind of just standing by for now. Right. So we'll follow this cable all the way out and then come back and scout out the area south southeast of the hydrophone to let's see if it's a good landing spot. Let's follow the cable and get a fix on the IP and then... Yep. Yeah. Okay. And normally we would start at the IP and do this, so it's good to see where the IP is, where the cables are. The other day when we dropped those uh, those bee bags, it came pretty close to a cable <laughs> that we didn't didn't that wasn't on our maps. It was, I guess, on our maps. Just wasn't where it was supposed to be. Drop Atlanta down and go tail to tail. We don't need to. Roger. Come down. Five meters. Okay. It's probably going to curve back around to the uh, south there, judging by the little layout map you got in front of you. Okay. Atlanta's 30 meters off bottom. Yeah, when we start seeing an in, there'll be an instrument all, somewhere near this cable um, that's 26 meters from the IP. So when we start seeing that, we'll we know we're getting close. Okay. Me. Yeah, yeah. looks like you can kind of start seeing some Falmount cables up ahead. Yep. Just out of reach. Atlanta should start moving. Soon. You can drag it that far if you want. Roger. I'll shut off all our heading. Yep, come on, heading. So the IP is 75 meters away from the hydrophone away, right? It should be closer. It should be 59 meters away. Okay. Out of bearing 53. So I guess that's, yeah, IP to hydrophone is 59 meters at 53 degrees. 
I mean, I'm not 100% sure how these numbers are necessarily recorded. They might just be off the waypoints from the last dive. Target to the left right there. Okay. I don't think there's sonar targets, like, ranged. Um, so I'll make another ship move then. You can just see the IP there. Yep. If it's 15 meters out. <clears throat> Can okay. we go 10 meters, 225? Thanks. Oh, it's an anti-mora. What's that, the, what, the hump, hump thing? Humpback fish or which one? Oh, the, uh, the mora... The um, the white guy. No, the gray fish that's right above the IP. Oh. <clears throat> All right. He didn't like the lasers. <laughs> Guess not. Do we want to get a fix? Yes, please. Yep. I don't like that color. I can't read it. <laughs> yeah. That should be it. Dark red on black. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Um, let's go with... Pretty in pink. Pink? Yeah, let's see how pink goes. Okay. Bar you know, Barbie movie's coming out. Oh, so. perfect. Yeah. You can actually read pink. Yeah. Let's say teal would be a good color difference. Okay. On you. So we have that movies. target. We want to... Go and plug it. Go and plug it, Roger. The Barbie movie's already banned in two or three countries. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. I'm excited for Oppenheimer. Yeah. It's a good article on that geo today about it. Then, um, uh, when do we, can we work on the connection while they start rigging the cable? Yeah, they can send it down. You can um, come up five meters. Uh, or they can definitely get ready. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll I can go, go, I can go let them know if you want. No, I don't mind. I can walk down there saying we're probably going to be ready to put it in the water pretty soon here. Come up five meters. Can we go back on auto heading? Yep. Get my one wrap out of my cable. Um. Um, I've been advised to start reading out coordinates of confirmed position annotation, so I'm just going to read out the coordinates for this IP. That is latitude four seven decimal seven five six seven four seven. Seven four, longitude negative one two seven decimal seven three one seven four Come up nine five two one nine two zero. Oh, yep, there's our little dog leg. Yep. Take the shorter path.
pretty high now. That's all right. We're um, Hercules is directly under Atlanta, so that's fine. <clears throat> no, no joke. Camera being very cool. The sea star? Yeah, it's a sea star. It's a Freyastera. Hey. I don't know if it has a common name. I'll pull out the uh, mango, magnum. Oh. It might be zip tied. Where is that? Fletcher still in the porch, Danny? It is. Right. Yes, it dummy is. Dummy plug in it. <laughs> is it tied down? It doesn't look like it. No, unless it's behind that red. There might be some tie wraps on it. Or <laughs> Perfectly in the middle. Bringing out a uh, magnum. Yeah. That thing's heavy enough. You should be able to unplug. Yeah. But if you want to grab on, yeah, go ahead. All right, I'll grab on. More fun to grab on. Yeah. <laughs> it's good practice. You wanna, what do you want to grab? You want to grab the upright? I think the arm right there, just the, oh, the okay. leg or the leg, whatever. Nope. Oh. There's cables taped up in those legs, so. Maybe you have to grab the parking position. I don't see any cable on that leg. There you go. Grab. There's a cable on that leg, though. Not on this one, though. <coughs> oh, okay. Got gotcha. it. Yep. Perfect. The yellows, what is the yellow? Just rope? Oh, it's a streak. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we do the same thing. Kind of common practice. So this instrument is secure, correct? Power? Okay. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the, yep, in the Fletcher. Sorry. Racking back. Can I get the porch out? Yeah, I would just fly it back the snail trail. I think we're good with the porch. Yeah, you might want to think twice on the porch because we got the web tool and all that jewelry yep. there. Okay, so this is zip tied down, so should I need to hold on to it or? I would hold on to it, yes. Yeah, okay. Good there. Good, I'll release Magnum. 
three, two, one, jaw open. Jaw closed for storage. Okay, so. The plan is to fly this back towards the IP? Yeah, yep. back towards the IP. Back along your snail trail there. But you can offset one side or the other, whatever. So it doesn't have a too acute of a bend radius in it. Sitting there, right in the middle of the platform, right in the middle of the yeah, the grating. That's probably good there, Dick. Yep. Turn and burn to the southeast there, south southeast. Put it right on the D in Cascadia, or the <laughs> B in Basin. <laughs> Descend a little bit so we can see. Uh, it's just gonna create a big mess. I can see the cable. Okay. Right there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You know. Just checking it's out the commotion. Just hanging out. Oh wow. Did you get good drone footage? Okay, we have a sonar target. Okay, about halfway to the... Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Ah, oh, that's too bad. You can uh, spin around and look at it as you lay it out if you want. <coughs> or just keep coming forward where it's got a little tension on it. Either way works. Mm -hmm. Got it there in bubble, Jake. Looks good. Yeah, I see it. Ah. Yeah, I guess it's a little bit of luck when it comes to those things. Oh no. Yeah. You'll have to oh. come down for him, Denny. Yep. 
Yeah, you don't want it to land itself. No, definitely not. Mm-hmm. You happy? Happy. Oh no. Of course it's zip tied in. You can uh, let go of it now, Danny, and grab the hockey puck and boot it off there. Okay, that's a good idea. Can I get you to... Can I get uh can I get you to look down on the camera? Perfect. <coughs> um, you're not on SPL there. They, have oh. an, uh, they usually have an, al an altimeter on the bottom, Micah. Like yeah, they have. Uh, yes, of course. They've got light the on. They've got light on. Oh, let me reset um, this first. What do you have? Like a draw, uh, DJI fa uh, Phantom or a Mini? Mini. Okay. Yeah. So yes. there's a bunch of sensors on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, they have a. The Minis have a single altimeter. I forget what it uses to range, but I think it's radar. Lidar. Yeah. Barometer. <laughs> For altitude, Maybe, yes. Yeah. For altitude, yeah. yes. But um, it does want. It does actually have a, a ground sensing. Because my friend had one that he was flying no around an island, and then it ran out of batteries, ran low, so it returned auto home and just ran right into the side of the mountain because he was on the other side of it. So the altimeter wasn't doing anything for him. Oh, well, I figured yeah, it was it going off. hit it ceiling. It has a return to home uh, altitude that's uh, set in the program. But wouldn't the altitude follow the slope of the mountain? Not as so it it's probably barometer, it. right? Anyways, yeah. So it, it yeah it doesn't have those ones don't have any like collision avoidance sensors looking outwards. So yeah. if it like ran yeah. into a cliff, then it would wouldn't have like seen that cliff. Uh, but actually, the new they just came out with a new mini that does have collision avoidance sensors. Yeah, um, those things are incredible, those yeah. little mini drones. Yeah. The Mini 3 was announced uh, yesterday, I think. It things looks really good. Yeah, I've got two, but it's never having fly drones. I just You can land it on. A, my first one was off our work boat and then off my sailboat. It's just the easiest while you're moving. It's, yeah, it's so, so easy. Cool. Do you catch yours? Uh, yeah. You catch it and do the flip? Um, yeah, it's come, I've come a long way. Now I do that. Before I would just grab it with a leather glove because the first few times it like sliced my hand. <laughs> oh no! Oh, um, but on a on a on a calm day, on a, a boat, it's fine. Get a quick fix on the belly right here. If we can. Yeah. Go away. Like a position. Right here. Yeah, just so we know where the end of the cable is. <clears throat> Belly fix. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I have a Maverick, Maverick Air and uh, Air 2, and I was flying it off of a little research boat to Kalnana a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That was definitely interesting. It's on our website. Oh, the video? Yeah, the yeah. video. Uh, cool. It's it's really hard. Like you always, I always run into these snags on boats because they, they can't like set their um, I don't know. They have all those pre pre flight calibrations that they have to go through. So if you've got ship heave and you got to like kind of override all those features. I shut every feature off except for auto gyro. So yeah. it'll, it'll still stay stable, but all the collision avoidance, any of the return to home, I don't want it returning to home. Yeah. Because it will go right back to where you started. Which no. is not where you were. Not on a boat. Okay. Looks like the deck crew is just li lifting the um, hydrophone off the deck right now. And they'll have to play some uh, 
So we're placing a new one and and, and we play, uh, pulling this one up? Yeah, swapping them and then we're going to do, once we're done that, we'll do a few um, benthic surveys. And then... Why? LiDAR. Yeah. Barometer. <laughs> For altitude, Maybe, yes. Yeah. For altitude, yeah. yes. But um, it does want, it does actually have a, a ground sensing. Because my friend had one that he was flying no around an island, and then it ran out of batteries, ran low, so it returned auto home and just ran right into the side of the mountain because he was on the other side of it. So the altimeter wasn't doing anything for him. Oh, well, I yeah, figured it was it going off. It its ceiling. It has a return to home uh, altitude that's uh, set in the program. But wouldn't the altitude follow the slope of the mountain? Not as so it's, it's probably barometer, right? Anyways, yeah. So it, it yeah, it doesn't have. Those ones don't have any like collision avoidance sensors looking outwards. So yeah. if it like ran yeah. into a cliff, then it would have wouldn't have like seen that cliff. Uh, but actually, the new they just came out with a new mini that does have collision avoidance sensors. Yeah, um, those things are incredible. Uh, those yeah. little mini drones. Yeah, the mini three was announced uh, yesterday, I think. It things looks really good. Yeah, I've got two, but it's never having fly drones. I just you can land it on a. My first phone was off our work boat and then off my sailboat. It does this the easiest while you're moving. It's, yeah, it's so, so easy. Cool. Do you catch yours? Uh, yeah. You catch it and do the flip? Um, yeah, it's come, I've come a long way. Now I do that. <laughs> Before I would just grab it with a leather glove because the first few times it like sliced my hand. <laughs> oh, no. Um, but on a, on a, on a calm day, a, on the boat, uh, it's fine. Get a quick fix on the belly right here if we can. Yeah. We go by. Like a position. Here. Yeah, just so we know where the end of the cable is. <coughs> Belly fix. Yeah, I have a Mavic, Mavic Air and uh, Air 2, and I was flying it off of a little research boat to Kalnana a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That was definitely interesting. It's on our website. Oh, the video? Yeah, the yeah. video. Uh, cool. It's it's really hard. Like you always, I always run into these snags on boats because they, they can't like set their, um, I don't know, they have all those pre pre flight calibrations that they have to go through. So if you've got ship heave and you gotta like kinda override all those features. I shut every feature off except for auto gyro. So yeah. it'll still stay stable, but all the collision avoidance, any of return to home, I don't want it returning to home. Yeah. Because it'll go right back to where you started. Which is not where you were. Not on a boat. Okay. Looks like the deck crew's just live it lifting the um Hydrophone off the deck right now, and they'll have to place some. Uh so we're placing a new one and and, and we play, uh, pulling this one up. Yeah, swapping them, and then we're gonna do. Once we're done that, we'll do a few um, benthic surveys, and then wire clip is probably gonna be around like four and five in the morning. You should do it around three in the morning. <laughs> three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I'm I didn't see the last <laughs> about one either. 2.45, that's a good time. I didn't see the last one, I won't see this one. I'm, and I was very excited about this tool. Oh, we are too, and we're going to miss it again. But reports from the other watch that it went very smoothly. Nice. Yeah, very uh, I want to see video of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, we we're talking about replacing all those little puck things that we we're dealing with on the other one, on the other ones. You know, those like ROV releases yeah. with just wires, so that you just never have to mess around with those things, and you just show up with this. A lot cheaper. <coughs> oh yeah, and they don't. I don't know. Now you're just worrying about one wire. It's solid. It can't accidentally. You don't have to fiddle with a pin, but you always have to have this cutter on board, which is kind of a lame sometimes. Yeah. Better, better look at that that free weight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could just replace it all with uh, acoustic releases. That's what we've got on uh, most of our moorings. We have acoustic releases on, on all the ones that are autonomous. Yeah. Yeah, but if they're not autonomous, we... 
And the RV's Watch down out there. for the hydrophone there, Jake. Well, that makes I'm sense. You got to unplug it. Plenty far away from yeah. there. <laughs> A little close. Um, and also, your brow is going to kind of settle up top there if you get too close as well. We're just getting you good shots with the still cam. Oh, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> of that fish, of that starfish. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that weight. Hopefully it just falls off on the way up. I'll just let Mike know that it's on there. We can uh, come around to the connector side and pick it out of there. Yeah, that would be useful if we can, if we can get our yeah. end up in there. Sounds fun. I mean, we're just uh, waiting anyways. Probably land your, land your right side of your porch in there on the... On right underneath the connector. Under the grating. Yeah, uh, you'll have to nudge the right side in to get in there. It doesn't look like it's that deep. Oh, we watch. Close on your brow. But remember, I've got to swing my arm in, so if I need to be centered on the arm. I probably have to porch out if I want to do that. Yeah. You could just sit down, and I'll reach in there and see what happens. What kind of starfish is that? Um, it's a fraelid. You come to the left some, Jake. So, Megan, what's your background that you know so much about this biology stuff? Uh, I'm a marine biologist and I study deep sea coral and sponge communities. Oh, so this is right up your alley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like right in your wheelhouse. It's They're not just random. Yeah, it's bats. not that, that I just like just know the animals yeah, because okay. I... Yeah, I hope that. Come left. Need to like know them. Bring your head Literally more like to exactly the left. Like you study. <laughs> That's exactly what I study. That's why I know them all. Yeah. Head turns a lot. you're just super keen. Yeah. Put the right yeah. side so of your So I've put the together a bunch of deep sea animal guides. Okay. Yeah. So. So that helps, and I annotate video. So I'm looking at these animals and identifying them on a daily basis. Yeah, and cock your head. And to you're the also left from a little Hawaii. More. Or yeah. Or yeah. Whoop. So do you do a lot of snorkeling and stuff like that, and look at the enemies and different coral fish and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't really know the shallow water stuff very well. Oh, there you go. When I was just there, I had that you get these underwater books. Uh huh. And yeah, you can, I've like, seen flip those. Through and check them off as yeah, you're like cool. swimming. Yeah. That's pretty fun. Yeah, I know a bunch of the Hawaiian names for the fish, but I don't know all their scientific names. Oh yeah. Whoop. I don't think the books have that. I think we just sit on bottom and pirate be fine. Yeah. Fine. But we do have a lot of really pretty fish in Hawaii. You were all right there. That's so good. Yeah, what I thought cool oh, was all the endemic good. fish. Oh, yeah. That's so the book would highlight which ones are endemic as well. So you're like, oh, this is cool. You'll only see it here. Mm -hmm. But we don't have that many types of coral, which I think is interesting. Yeah, it looked like a bunch of acropora or whatever you call that. No, we don't have any acropora. So what are those like? Yeah, I'm still so all polyp stony looking. Um, Parietes and Montebrea. Okay. Yeah, lots of that. Yeah, lots of that. So it's like those are our two main ones. And then there's Procellopora, and there's some uh, fungiated corals, those like single polyp corals that move around. Can you, use, oh. uh, you can go to the hydraulic page. What are the I've Danny and Pan right if you want. Um, There's some big ones. Like I like those like Oh ones the big mounds. Yeah. Yeah, those are the varieties. Varieties, those are mm -hmm. sweet. And just then the ones that you're just camera. gonna cover everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're just like one continuous like blanket. Yeah, those are usually varieties as well. Priorities as well. So they come in a lot of different like forms depending on where they're growing. So they can form big lobes, or they can like form fingers. Those hydrothermal vent looking or things. Or they, yeah, or they can form like a, a flat layer. Yeah, the the way to tell parietes and mentibra apart is parietes has smaller polyps, but they both have small polyps. So it's <laughs> it's only really easy to tell them apart if there's one right next to each other because the difference is very, very small. But that's just a visual difference. The genetic difference is larger, but can't see that underwater. And Montipera tends to do the fingering thing more like more often, and the Parietes tends to be more lobey. Yeah, I only, I used to have a reef tank, and then Acropora is all the only thing that I knew that kind of does, does that. That does the fingering, the yeah. Vents, yeah. And there's some, uh, 
fungiated corals, those like single polyp corals that move around. Use, uh, you can go to the hydraulic page. What are the I've Danny and Pan right if you want. Um, There's some big ones. Like I like those. Like oh, ones the big mounds. Yeah. Yeah, those are the parieties. Parieties, those are mm -hmm. sweet. And then the ones that just kind of cover everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're just like one continuous like blanket. Yeah, those are usually parieties as well. Parieties as well. So they come in a lot of different like forms depending on where they're growing. So they can form big lobes, or they can like form fingers. Those hydrothermal vent looking or things. They, yeah, or they can form like a, a flat layer. Yeah, the, the way to tell parietes and mentipora apart is parietes has smaller polyps, but they both have small polyps. So it's, <laughs> it's only really easy to tell them apart if there's one right next to each other because the difference is very, very small. But that's just a visual difference. The genetic difference is larger, but can't see that underwater. And Muntipera tends to do the fingering thing more like more often, and the Parietes tends to be more lobey. Yeah, I only, I used to have a reef tank, and then Acropora is all the only thing that I knew that kind of does, does that. does the fingering, the yeah. Dance, yeah. Yeah, we don't have any Acropora. Definitely loose. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that is so strange. But how did it get there? I don't know. Why would it be there? Sea Star grabbed it. Because <laughs> I can't see this being lowered down and that not falling off. Right. Yeah, like I just don't like it there in case someone's doing deck work and then it, that's when it chooses to fall off. Oh, that's exactly when it would fall off. Yeah. Video, can I get a zoom? I'm trying to see if my uh, claw will fit in the hole. I think it's in there. Oh, oh. yeah, but Barely. it won't grab. Maybe just nudge it Come off. On. Come on. Come on, video. You might just have to keep pushing it sideways. <laughs> I don't know if you, can you get. You're pretty safe except for those connectors by that. All right, back out of there, Dick. Yeah, yeah. That was it. We tried. Yeah. Was it? Well, I was going to punt it off to the side. I can punt it underneath the house. No, that was it. We tried. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do think, like, if you want to get around all those little connectors, it starts getting a little bit sensitive. Yep, yep. It is free, though, so you'll have to alert the deck. Yeah. Yep. If right, I had Baba Jaws, I could have grabbed it. Video is uh, switching changes or watches here. Have a great afternoon. Hi. It's fun of playing air hockey. While we wait, um, would it be possible to get some like video of that starfish? Sure. Just let me know if the ROV needs to be in a specific spot and we can't be doing stuff like this. No, we're, we're uh, sitting pretty right now. Let's uh, also, while we're waiting, we can uh, decide where we want to land it, put a yeah. target there. And it, it, the, obviously the wire does also have a beacon, so we could be tracking that as well. Okay. Oh, stuck it over Do you want to do that first, Dan, before we start doing this kind of stuff? Uh, no, we got days to... Be framed up in the stills camera. Video still doing watch change. Uh, you need to zoom. Uh, yeah, zoom there. Okay. I'm just gonna go uh, have a look at what they're doing there on the deck with it. Yeah, if we can kind of keep like coming around like that, that's pretty cool.
still think I can punch that right off of there. That's gonna bug you all day, isn't it? It is. Just, just wanna. I was about to swing it when he said get out of there. Well, yeah, well, we, I, I think I, we're fine. Like yeah, it's fine. breaking off the icy link connectors wouldn't be would no, be I, way worse. No, I I, I get that. Oh, so I know there's at least an inch between the bottom connector and the grating now. Right. Oh, we could fit underneath of there, but your minute might not. Well, I wasn't going to. I was just going to get on the side of it and just give it a flick. You can come wide, Jacob, when you're ready. I really like these frames. I think they're solid. Like, Are they steel? Or? They're steel, yeah, but look at all those anodes on there. Oh, yeah. All those hydrophones are so well supported. So. Look pretty easy to make, too. So the landing spot's going to be south of here? Yeah, as long as the biggest thing is the cable needs to reach. And you want to transfer the hook from one to the other, so okay. however the RV needs to do that. But while we wait, if, they, if you see anything interesting, we can go in and zoom in on a creature or All right. the There's mud or whatever. Exploring. Yeah. The mud? There's only yeah, something there's in the mud in the sea, us. honestly. That's true. There's a cucumber. cucumber. Go look at that hole. <laughs> so maybe it's just a, a good time to answer one of the questions. Is that all right? Sure. Wonderful time. Excellent. Um, yeah, if some folks are interested in how we got into this line of work, and I will say we've got a whole bunch of different backgrounds. When you go to nautiluslive.org, you can take a look at this current expedition, NA-151, and you can look at all of the crew, the that? science and the OET crew, and uh, read up about I don't know. our interests and our backgrounds. In the van right now, we've got an oceanographer, an engineer, a teacher, a machinist, <laughs> machinist. <laughs> a it's really the broad spectrum of, of yep, video engineer people. or navigation, oh. all sorts. And Lynette, can I can I um, put you on the spot? Sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you've got uh, something exciting starting in September too. Um, yeah, I am starting veterinary school. <laughs> uh oh, did I <laughs> did I let the cat out of the bag? Wow! Oh, well, you, you did say you're putting her on the spot. She could she could have declined. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I could have lied. I guess I could have made something up. <laughs> <laughs> but all to say that there's a whole bunch of backgrounds and interests in uh, in this line of work. Oh, this looks in. Oh, this is back to the hole. Back to the hole. Yep. It's I saw the sonar target. It, it sucks you right It looked back so in, weird in the sonar. Cool I was like, I gotta take it's like a tractor beam. Yeah. It totally is a tractor beam. That is the <laughs> coolest thing. <laughs> what is in there? Is there like a weird. What's making the shadow? This is this a different this hole? This is a different hole. Oh, yeah. Think. Don't get too close to this one. This one's an actual borehole, like a cork, oh, wow. cork like site. Like a sarlacc pit. Yeah. It, this one has actually cabled. Oh, this actually has like oh, a wow. thing. Yeah. So this is not the same one. <laughs> so this is what made that hole. Well, not what made it. No. This is why. This is why the hole was there. Wow. Is this thing cabled to? That is a massive instrument. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure what the corks are, but if you want to read about it, you can look up. I think it's just cork. Like C O R K. Is that thing just sitting there? Is it connected to anything? It's connected or? to the network where it's downloading data, but there's also a bunch of these that are autonomous. And you go occasionally and download the data 
from them. So this is one, I think, one of the only ones that are not autonomous. So, and they've got, I think it's a like a pipe that I don't know how deep they go, wow. but they've got sensors all the way down. And you gotta be like That's drill ship. Cool. Drill yeah, ship I think you need a drill ship to get them. Yeah, yeah. to get them in. It's it, quite, it's quite the install. Is this the stuff for the geoscientists to observe subsurface pressure and temperature changes caused by earthquakes? I think so, okay. but also I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I kind of well, want to do a fly around that thing. I want to see it. I want to say I'm not 50% sure. All right. Well, uh, maybe our expedition chat, someone can chime in and <laughs> inform us. Yeah, definitely. Um, that was cool. We just have such a was wide cool. array, array of stuff. It's hard to know about all of them. This is true. But it. Uh, but really, anyone interested can can Google it. It's um. Oh, it I guess you're googling it right now. Oh uh, yeah, I'm just checking on the Ocean Networks Canada website. I think it was Kate that installed some of these. Right on. Yeah. Cool. Is it cork as in like wine cork or? Yeah. It okay. uh, stands for, well. Not like wine cork quite. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean like the spelling. You spelling, yeah. C-O-R-K, yeah. C -O -R -K, yeah. Uh, yeah. Circulation ob Obvitation Retrofit Kit for Hydrologic Observations. It does look similar to what we were seeing in the screen but so here's my plea to our expedition chat to help inform us is that what we saw Mitch from Shore found some further information on the cork. He said um, the cork hydraulic observatory was designed to seal open holes and carry sensors and fluid samplers for long-term monitoring. Thank you, Mitch. Oh, right. fluid samples too. Yeah, I forgot about that. Right on, Mitch. Thank you. He's uh, chimed in and helped us out a number of times. Yes. Right on. <laughs> Just a bunch of sea cucumbers. And a big old cork. back into our dust cloud. Uh -huh. Back to the hydrophone. So fun fact about the Ocean Networks Canada hydrophones, we have a recording of each of the three ecotypes of killer whales. Um, so offshores, transients or bigs, as well as residents from our, from a variety of our networks. And uh, you can access all of those sounds on our SoundCloud or on our YouTube channel. And there's not really a lot known about offshores. So I think that's the other neat thing about having these observatories in place 24-7, 365, is we have the opportunity to um, hear and collect that data all the time. Another interesting tidbit is the audio files from the hydrophone are our beefiest, uh, most space greedy files and give our data stewardship team a lot 
of data to sort through. Out of curiosity, how big are those uh, audio files? Um, maybe Jeanette can chime in, um, but like in terms of one file or in terms of yeah, just out like of curiosity. In just general? Yeah. Um, I'll see if I can find out. Because I, I deal with large video files. In my head, usually Ooh, audio files are the, the easier ones to deal with. With audio, I'm it sure these are mostly on the frequency you're recording it. So yeah, if you're recording fair. high frequency um, data, Could then it's a lot more data. More? Yeah, a lot more data. Yeah, let me see what I can find out. Is this the same hole we landed on? Yes, I think so. Just from the other side, maybe. Yeah, just our chart doesn't show that we've been over here, but I guess everything kind of... Ah, uh, the snail trail didn't start back then. Ah, uh, that's the problem. Can we zoom in on that, like, pink thing? Yeah. The, the bulb shape? Ah, oh, that looks like a crater. It doesn't look Major like a hole, it looks like a crater. Like, the way the edges have kind of given in. I think probably as you drill or something, there's a significant amount of sediment that kind of spills over to the side and doesn't fill back in. We're just do an analyze, analyze the whole base of this thing. I think video is waiting on you. Yep. Get a zoom there. Roger that. Whoa. Oh, oh whoa. There was a pink ball thing. At the Just when we lost ball. Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, are you in the lounge? Yeah. Megan, are you in the lounge? Those are pretty gnarly. Wow, that is really cool. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. What, what is, is that? An enemy? I, th I would say an enemy. That is the spikiest an enemy. It looks like a hedgehog. It looks like one of those, like, <laughs> uh, I forget the name, those toys, you, like the, yeah. Yeah, like the pink yeah, rubbery yeah, ones. Yeah. Koosh yeah. ball. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's right. I forgot about koosh balls. It's exactly, koosh ball. couldn't remember the name, but that's exactly it. Anything like this on that. our... Uh, Oh, you're on it, hey? Yeah, I'm just checking. Um, so Ocean Networks Canada has a marine life field guide. I'm just checking to see if we have anything that looks quite like this. Uh oh, but dust, I don't, dust I don't clouds see anything. coming. Yeah, that's that's unique, I think. Really cool. I wish Megan was here. It's I'm better, trying to get her in, but I think she's uh, unavailable right now. Some more nutrients in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> and come on. Yep, pulling wide. Just destroyed entire ecosystems. No, no, no. Not good benefits. <laughs> Enhanced it. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> those animals can move. <laughs> Barely touched down. Just a little landslide of sediment. It came from kind of behind you. So this is why we have shore support. Stephanie on shore found out this is a pom pom anemone, according to our marine field guide. Thank pom -pom. you, Stephanie. Pom pom anemone. It's an appropriate name. <laughs> that was a cool thing, yeah. So it looks like. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see looks that. Like the package I missed, is I missed over that. in the water. Um, Packages in the water. Yeah, it looks like it. Cool. From the, I don't know if we can see the beacon yet, but or if it's even on there yet. Tech hasn't called and said anything yet. Yeah, it might not be. Still quite a few people standing around the winch, so I'm assuming that's to do with either a winch issue or a beacon is not on yet issue. Yesterday they had some winch troubles and it did, the level wide didn't really do an excellent job of spooling the winch back up. all over the place. Gotta love hobble. So this one, what's this one? Rat this rat tail? Is, is it a rat tail? Yeah. Definitely a rat tail. I would think so. 
Oh, let's ask him. There's a lot. Of, <laughs> well, there's quite a few fish with a rat in it. Hey, ratfish. Now there's rat tail. What else? Unfortunate name. The good news is they can't see the light. No? They can't, no. They're blind? Uh, they can't see all the spectrum of light. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. And that is something I got from our uh, professor of deep sea ecology, uh, Jeff Drazen. So, because that was something I was very curious about. I was like, do we just go down and blind everything with these right. massive lights? Yeah, same with the octopus, right, at Endeavor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I wonder if that's similar then where they just don't see that frequency. So if you're hanging around the vent, I'm sure there's a lot of like other weird light, like yeah. infrared or something like this. I don't know. Oh yeah, bioluminescence. I mean, it, if we had the cameras, it'd probably look amazing right now. I mean, who knows? The whole bottom of the sea could be lit up. We don't. We just can't see that spectrum. What would you guess hydrothermal vents look like through an infrared camera? Does infrared work subsea? Yeah. Kinda. I wonder what level of detail you'd see. That would be interesting. Hmm. Maybe you guys need to build an instrument. <laughs> Test the theory. So, interesting thing about the rat tails, they have a barbel on their chin, which would be their sensory organ. Like, yeah. So it physically, like, probably senses things. Danny, you want to fly around? Explore a little bit? Don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> get, some, get some training in. That sound good, Dan? Yeah, Roger. Right. Just see if I can point all your Atlanta at you. Go ahead, Deck. Are we We're ready? ready? We're ready. Deck control. When you get the USBL beacon in, can you confirm that it is on and give me the number on it? Roger, thank you. Head up to the north there, Danny. That sonar target there. Hmm. Go look around in the north for landing spot. I think. Guess it helps if you can hear me. I can hear you now. There we go. Ah, uh, it's a hydrophone. Let's go to the north a bit on the nav screen there. Okay. Head north. Oh, that's just one of those.
Yeah. Cool. Oh, there's a skate. Go ahead, video. Going in. That's good. Of course, he stopped moving as soon as <laughs> I. Okay, go wide. Pull away. As soon as I zoom in on him. You have to. You have to be the fish, Danny. Be the fish. I was trying to. I was trying to uh, like think of his move, and he's just like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna cruise." So I'm like, "This can be perfect." <laughs> he just stops. He knew. He's like, "I'm camera shy." Yeah, turn on the down lights. Okay. If you want a good zoom of him, you got to put him basically in bubble camera there. Okay. And I, I don't know, but let, if the it lasers are bad for the their cam eyes. I don't no. know. I don't know. I think it's kind of the same thing with the spectrum. Go ahead, video. Going in. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Wow. I wonder what those two white spots are in behind its eyes. Go wide. Go wide. Good. Roger, thank you. Is that going to show up on our nav screen too, Lynette? I think it should. Yep, there it is. Go ahead, video. Go in. The white dot. The white dot. In for zoom. Yeah, go ahead, zoom in. There's a cable there. Zoom. What cable would that be? I don't know. I'll look, see if I can't find something. Where are we right now? Over there. Not sure. Okay, go wide video. One wide. I love watching those guys swim. Me too. And so I'm just like, ah, I can sit here and do this all day. <laughs> Wait a second. You do. <laughs> It's almost like you planned this. They don't let me do construction, but they'll let me sit here and stare at animals all day. <laughs> so I'm just, there's some interesting scientific research about the eyes of skates. So I'm just, uh, 
found something about a different genus of skates that um, the pupil shape camouflages their eyes. But I'm not sure if that's this skate in particular. So if folks know anything about that spot, share it with us. Get another inch at least. I can see now, I can see the wall. Comically large. Oh, yeah, that's because you're <laughs> taller than everyone else and you sit up straight. Yeah, I always lift it up. <laughs> it's my fault. Oh, you lift it up? Yeah, well, because I can't see the um, SPL panel if oh. I oh. if it's down low because I'm looking down. Looking oh, down yeah. I can see the SPL just fine. Yeah, you tall people. <laughs> Yeah, I lift it up at like an inch or two every time. <laughs> Raj, <laughs> how we smash it down onto the comms connector. Pilots, a question for you. Go ahead, video. Are, well, it's SCF, but that's cool. Um, no, they're on the or, Zoom. Or you're doing the Zoom. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm Lauren, but you know, that's all good. <laughs> you're doing the Zoom. That's We're all gnarly. the same to Danny. <laughs> oh, boo. Okay. Uh, anyways, um, someone is wondering if frame. we have grates over the propellery. Um, the thrusters? propulsion thrusters, thank you. Over the uh, lateral thrusters we do because they're right, one of them, well, just the starboard side because it's over the starboard bio box. So right. when we put things in there, if it floats up, there's a chance of it going into the lateral thruster. Okay. I think this and guy's doing yoga. The ones that <laughs> don't have, have grates over them, do we ever get blended creatures? Yep. Yeah. Every, every once in a while. Every once in a while. Any once in a while, we'll make some uh, sushi. Oh, look, he's doing that. Ah, no. He's good. Could be oh, a, like a predator response. No, I get. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we go. I'm trying to keep this guy in frame. Such a weird animal. <laughs> I know it's great though. That swimming form is just impeccable. Yeah, if only I could keep a steady uh I find if I let go of the controls it's much more steady. Yeah. No, don't turn those no. buttons on. Just let go no of auto's it. dead stick. Look how steady it is. <laughs> Yeah, float up into the abyss. Now dial your Z bias in a little. If you want to do zooms, you're going to have to be up around. Uh, you can look at something on the seabed and dial it until it doesn't go up or down. That's how you get those. Okay, go wide video. One wide. Yep. I think that's pretty solid now. Yeah, it looks... Still climbing. Well, you want it to climb a little, so yeah. then, then when you're trying to keep something up tight like that, you just got to give it a barely little... Just uh, a little feather, feather yeah. of the vertical. Yeah, a little feather of the vert. Gotcha. But yeah, that's going to be a problem. Take your hand off the right stick altogether. Um, yeah. And you're just solid. And you'll find most of the time the animals will float in the current, so you can, if you position yourself in a good spot, all you have to do is just feather your verticals and float along with the, with the animal.
Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, some of the best video I've taken with this thing is I haven't touched the sticks the entire time. Uh, we're waiting for um, the package to come down. It's just overboard. And on its way down, we can't really move the vehicle too much, but we are going around looking at different creatures and animals. So if you want to, do you mind sitting in and kind of directing a little bit if there's anything interesting? We will. Oh, what do you mean? No, no, no. When we do the transects, I'll get you in here once this hydrophone's deployed and you can set it up. You're busy, huh? Go ahead and zoom in video. You don't want to sit and watch this? <laughs> we had a, a cool... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smell the flowers. <laughs> yeah, that's what Danny says. <laughs> oh, Dan. Yeah, that's a cool one. Uh, the digital stills are kind of, if you're not landed, if you're not really close, yeah. I think this you're getting better images from the video camera. We saw we oh, saw like a deep sea skate. Oh, and, and a, there was um, the an enemy. What was that? The pom pom an enemy. Pom pom an enemy. That but was cool. There no, they were in two different. We're talking about two different incidences. But with the skate, Dirk was noticing that there's the eyes, and then there's these white patches behind the eyes. Skate? Of the skate, yeah. Hmm. Do we go wide video? Well, wide. no. Yeah, so... Yeah. This one looks like he lost some legs at some point and starting to grow them back. Tilt down yeah. a little bit, with your camera. See where it is in bubble. That's... Yeah, now when he zooms in, you can you tilt oh, down more. It looked there. most with the like that one. Yeah. yeah, you can have video zoom past what the else was there? There's white, white patches there. What are the other two we see? Okay, video zoom in. Going in. That's the one. It's this, is this oh one. Yeah, this one. No, it's this one. It's got the white behind. Good. So I'll, I'll yeah. usually get it in bubble, and then uh, I think so. I'll tilt down with the we'll HD. We'll see some more. The you know super what we needed zooms. to see is the spines on the... And then it's easier to stay over it because you're not as far away from it. spines on the mid door side? reference it in the, in the bubble camera. Are the spines? Gotcha. Okay, go wide video. Oh, yeah, for the. See if I can do that. And then. Yeah, you can, of course. Um. So when it says spines oh, yeah, mid dorsal, it's about halfway is between it, the lasers where is and it the bottom of the screen. That's where you want it. There's the spines there. Okay, go ahead, zoom in, get it. Yeah. Zoom in. Go forward a little bit. It's good to be behind it when you start. Then you can sneak up on it. What do you think, Fabio? This guy lost some legs and grew them back? That's good. Yeah, that's where you want to be. So now the lasers are right above it. See yeah. where they are in the in the bubble camera? Yep. And it's easier to... That's like a nice... We call that a laser zoom. So the lasers are still in the target. Thanks, Fabio. And it's easier to... It's not so far away, so it's easier to stay on it. Yeah. So that funky looking oh. uh, sea cucumber we saw earlier are echinoderms. They're actually cousins to the sea stars. So, oh. yeah. Okay, go wide video. One wide. And I tilt back up again. So I, I use that little bit of tilt quite often when we're doing that kind of stuff, especially when there's junk on the front porch. If you get dialed with your video guy while he's doing the, if you know where you, if you have it in bubble, like where you have the C star thingy now, yeah, then when they zoom in, you can do the tilt down and you never see the port. So if video zooms in slowly while you're tilting down, you're just like nobody knows, and no one knows our secrets. Stealth yeah. zoom. But yeah, I definitely get them in bubble for uh, 
Oh no, sorry, that's August. 2660. Yeah, Dan knows all the tricks for the BBC shots. The picturesque. Let's call it National Geographic. The Nat Geo shots. Ooh, there's a little mound over there. Yeah, go check it out. Bioturbation. Yeah, some of the uh, highlight shots have been just, you know, playing around, experimenting while we're doing exactly this, waiting there. What is that mount? That's Scientists cool. Scientists are discussing. Yeah, those, maybe, maybe those are, uh, are you talking about, like, the, the masses? No, like it's just the heaps of sand. Oh, the heaps of sand. Oh, yeah. I have no idea. There's a few of them here. A sand castle. Okay. <laughs> the there skates, we go. Sand castle. Sand the castle. skates do um, like Being bury in? themselves in, right? So, uh, but yeah. I don't know if they'd be able to make something that big. No, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it could be. It's quite the, quite the heap. Quite the heap. Is that a spider? That little. Ooh, let's white take a one? look. Oh, that's cool. Just like it. Well, probably not a spider, I sea guess. spider. Yeah. There we go. Spider crab. Those are my, my least favorite animals we see. Okay, zoom in video. Me out. <laughs> spider crabs or sea spiders? I like the sea spiders. The this does look like just a... Picnogonids? Picnogonids, yes. Yeah. That's the name of them. This looks like a terrestrial spider. <laughs> it does. It sure does. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Yeah, that feels like it could be on you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't say don't things like you. that. <laughs> I just think they're fascinating, and it's such a, it must be like such a evolutionarily awesome design to have it both terrestrially yeah. and under the ocean, right? Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. it seems kind of impractical for terrestrial, but yeah, this, look at this thing. Those thin legs. Definitely got eight legs. Yeah. The okay, you zoom into the video. Roger that. Hang on, guys got yanked. Oh, sorry, I'll come down. Yep, there. I'm getting yanked. Go wide. Going wide. Another one of those My prints leash is looks getting like pulled. a shoe You might come up a little, you're dragging your... Yep. Uh, Bumped it a couple that's times. That's where the dust is coming from. See it bubble there. Looks like we're going to want to move the ship north for our landing zone anyway. You want me to just do a 15 meter step now? Um, I'll wait till the wire gets a little deeper. Okay. Get some wire in the water. It's going to walk all over go. the place till we get there, so. There you go, Danny. Good target. Oh, there you go. Probably is. can't reach it, but. <laughs> yeah, you can reach it. Try and splat it on the camera. Can I have some uh, leash there, Dan? Right on. So just a quick flashback to our sea spider. <clears throat> it's uh, related Zoom to video? other arthropods. Oh, they are related. Mm -hmm. oh. They're in uh, yeah, Kingdom Animalia. Oh, whoa. Phylum whoa, Arthropoda. That's a good shot. Yeah. With the bug nice. coming in. <laughs> whoa. Did you just say bug? <laughs> <laughs> I, I could say bug. Uh, well, you'd be wrong, but that's all right. I feel like a sea cucumber would be a good pet. Isn't no. all of this bugs? Aren't, aren't no. all these things bugs? <laughs> they no. are not. Don't, don't move your head in lateral instead. <laughs> what are those? Well, it keeps wanting to turn. 
Well, if you do move your heading just gently, put hold a little in. Don't flick it. Gotcha. Every time you flick it, I can see the video move. Just gentle uh, now. Kind of lean into it. That's what I call You're being it. corrected yeah, by our viewers, oh. <laughs> Dirk. Oh. I'm sure they know more than I do. So. <laughs> That's all right. He's he's not a biologist, folks. The same technique and is used for uh, landing, so you're kind of just gently, Look gently at applying a little more. Great job, Danny. Yeah, that's a good shot. Yeah. All right. Okay, and come wide, video. Come wide. We have some thoughts about what that spider-looking thing was that we saw. So. Okay, good. Jake, was that you said this could be a good pet? Yes. Yep, <laughs> he did. <laughs> I don't know, I just see them flying around. And I've never seen one of those things coming I out. I bet you they're not very firm to hold. Oh, look <laughs> at this guy. Yeah, maybe He's not, shiny. Look maybe at not this. a holding pet. But, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure you can have bomb. one of those, but that's all right. One can dream. Everything's photobombing now coming in here. Yeah. This, like, four-piece jellyfish. I want their... Five seconds of fame. <laughs> well, I'm about to dust them out. So we had some some folks thinking that spider-looking thing is a type of isopod. Could be. Would that make it an octopod? <laughs> <laughs> turn back around to the south now. So you, uh, maybe you'll have your... Uh, Knows into what little breeze there is. I'm always impressed how many fish are down here at any of our sites. You go down and you're pretty much always seeing fish. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm fishing, I always feel like I'm always getting skunked. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, it makes me wonder. Maybe the deep sea just has more fish. And until you get down to like 4,700 meters off of Hawaii, and then there's nothing. <laughs> nothing down there. <laughs> I mean, you'll see the occasional rat tail and some isopod and stuff, but it's not as much life as we're seeing down here. Like, like there's always just a fish. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. One, one of the things I like to tell the students that we connect with is... Um, that there's there's still lots of stuff that we haven't seen before, so you know there's opportunity to um, potentially discover new species, make new observations, a variation within a species. Yeah. Lots of stuff for us to learn in the ocean. The coolest spot for anyone who wants to see fish is Upper Slope. There are hundreds of fish at any given time. It's really cool. Uh, that's just too much. It's better when it's abundant. Abundant? Not abundant. I mean, uh, and, uh, scarce a little bit. Because then you're like, ooh. What's Instead of just like, oh, look, hundreds of fish. What's that one down there? That's what I'm trying to find out. Oh, a sea pig. Is that a sea pig? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, you want to see a sea pig? Yeah. I want to see the fish. You guys oh. want to see a sea pig. Okay. It's to get a look at those guys when they're looking at you. You go what? up to the fish, they'll turn away. Sea pig, another great pet. Okay, <laughs> zoom in video. Zooming in. Okay. A sea spider has almost no central body. Most of the organs are in the leg. This is what one of our viewers is writing in to share with us. Thank you. You can go ahead and zoom in more the video. This guy's okay. organs are all in the front. Looks like. Oh, and he's, he's got, got a, a friend. Oh, he's, he's got, a friend. got a pet. Wasn't Megan saying something about they always have a pet? Like they just live on this the, that one oh, particular. Oh, look at this guy. Each. <laughs> he's like doing a hundred meter need, dash. Each sea pig sublets a, a leg or something. Yeah. Inflation. Yeah. <laughs> Get back in the frame here. Now you can see him eating. 
So they're detritivores, which means that they forage in the detritus around them in the, the sea floor. So uh, scientists are doing some research on microplastics and uh, sea pigs have been found to have ingested microplastics. So we are doing a really good job of ruining all the environments around the world. Just let that happy thought sink in. I'm having the best day of my life. You really ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a real buzzkill over here. Yeah. You know, let's, let's just put it down like, like, like let's just bring it back to reality. <laughs> who, who says it's bad? Why is it bad? Well, it's not natural, you know. It's Does that make it bad? In the case of plastic, yeah. Okay, go wide video. Pulling wide. Yeah, I, I don't know enough about any of that. i got to work on my pull-out game. Oop. I'm hitting the long stick. That'll do it. That will do it. I just dusted that <laughs> thing. What's that? Piece of uh, equipment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like an old chair. Uh, it's kind of outside of my range. Oh, uh, you can get it. Let's <laughs> find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just poke it. <laughs> we'll poke the stick. Pull out Atlanta. Yeah. The full force of Hercules. Can drag it 20 meters easy at this depth. Yeah, it looks like a beach chair. It does look like a beach chair. Yep. Or a pull-up bar. Half buried? Pull-up bar, yeah. Uh, what is a pull-up bar? It's one of those crunch things. We're doing crunches. Oh. You can see the armrests. <laughs> <laughs> or it could still be a chair. I did have so many questions. Did the captain get mad and throw it overboard? <laughs> <laughs> some previous captain. Be some jacked sea cucumbers around here. They're the ones you can have for a pet. It does look like it is definitely uh, got some plastic on there. Definitely looks like a chair. Yeah, I don't know how that would happen. This is where you decide to jettison. You're like, nah, enough of this chair. I know where its owner is around here somewhere. <laughs> That's strange. That's definitely um, one of those chilling thoughts. <laughs> it's part of the stroller or some deck equipment that got handles there. Yeah, it's weird. Video, go ahead and zoom in on that. Roger that. See, we don't only look at creatures. We try to figure out what things are on the deep blue sea. I'm surprised at the lack of corrosion on whatever this is, considering the lack of the amount of fouling. I feel like it's plastic. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Could be a good experiment for cheap Walmart uh, materials. Go buy a video. For oh, some no, use. Yeah, because look <laughs> at that. That has more fouling on it than any of our moorings we've been recovering. And they've been down for like four or five years. <coughs> Anodized. That's correct, yeah. Like some of those, um, we have these BPRs from Anarchan that is just steel. Some of them aren't even painted, and they go down there for years. Nothing special. Just, just don't work at Endeavor. High sulfur and content in the water. Yeah, it's funny how, like, some of those chemicals can just destroy steel. We once had a chlorine puck in uh, my dad's shop and it just one puck exposed that chlorine that was releasing slowly chlorine glass was just rusting every cast iron surface and he's like wood shop. Hmm. We'd sand it down, rust till we eventually found it and then stop everything stopped rusting after that. Hmm. Good way to ruin someone's day. Just start putting chlorine pucks in their house. Yeah, I know it's uh Every surface, you know, like on on like a was a machine shop, wood shop, like a lathe or whatever, all those like clean oiled surfaces, they all just start to rust. Oh. Yeah. Just moved to Hawaii for a few months. Same same effect. 
Yeah, and it's funny, in Canada you want, like, for, for you know, in vehicles, people say don't buy near the coast and stuff because it's got more salt water or whatever. But Victoria has, like, the best kept vehicles in Canada just because it doesn't, um, we don't have any of the salted roads. Uh, definitely. So it's like your best cars are from the island. I, I used to teach English to um, high school students in the summertime. And we had a whole group of students from Quebec, and they came out, and they're like, what is wrong with you guys? Everyone drives uh, old cars. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> back in Quebec, they can't... I flew uh, into my dust cloud, didn't they? They can't, they can't keep the cars in the wind. Like, the winter rots the cars out, so... So uh, fast, with, yeah. With all that, the uh, salt on the roads. Yep. I have that problem in the Northeast. Yep. Yeah. Too. The same <laughs> thing. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> yeah, and, and in Canada, we like to import cars if you're into like older vehicles like older trucks and stuff you bring them up from like um, okay. Arizona or something Back like this where it's just a little bit of surface rust but no oh. nothing else because our, our vehicles just kind of rust out so how about a quick shout out to our viewers in Australia, Finland, Mexico, Norway, Philippines, Romania, United Kingdom, Canada, and the United States. Thanks for hanging out with us. We are on uh, Expedition NA-151 with Ocean Networks Canada. Six meters up now. Yep. We're just, just waiting trying for to get him. away from that dust cloud. Turn and fly out of it. Just right above you and haul around. Turn left and come back to the south. We are just waiting for our oh, is that an octopus? Ooh, octopus. Yes, it is. Oh, oh. Well, I know there where I'm go. going. We are just waiting for the super octopus. Super excited about <laughs> someone with, who was it that was so frustrated for having missed all the octopus? I missed them all, so this is great. Really? Yeah. Oh. What? Every time I step out of the van, someone someone sees an octopus. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because I was just about to step out again. So. Uh -huh. You just can never leave. This looks like the same octopus we saw at Endeavor, like the same species. Species. Well, unless they all kind of look like this. Eight legs. Arms. Arms. Go ahead and zoom in video. Roger that. I don't know. Maybe it looks different. Stuff to tell. Pretty beautiful. It looks. All right. And Ooh. Just so people know, it's it's harder than it looks to get the uh, organism in frame. Two meters up, just come down a little. Yeah, that's that makes sense. <coughs> I scared him. Come down and gently land right there, you'll get some good video. This one's a little kind of, it's got some more texture to his head. Yeah. Good observation. Yeah, I don't think it's the same as the one we saw before. Now can, that we, I see can this. we turn the lasers off so we don't get it in its eye? Uh, Is that possible? I don't think it really goes in its eye. Well, I don't know. I don't think it could be good for it. Look at that. I think I've got some more zoom if you're All okay curled with that up. at some point, <laughs> ROV. I'm going to have you zoom out a little bit. Yep, right of that. that is a, look, it looks like he's got all terrains on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't press backwards, you'll dust it. Okay. He kind of looks pretty funny in the um, still camera there. Okay, go ahead and zoom in video. Roger that. Nicely done, Danny. The view in bubble cam is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 it is. <laughs> yeah, it what about still cam? Is still cam? Tell him better be hitting buttons. Uh, I was hitting them. I already got some stills of this guy. <laughs> Get a shot with the lasers off. Yeah. 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 Do you have any more zoom? Uh, let's see. Yes, I do. There we go. Oh, Jonathan's going to be so happy we finally saw something fun. Let's see if I can. Uh, it's 
not quite in focus, is it? No, I'm uh, trying to pull it perfectly now. You zoom out just a little bit. Roger that. Get him in frame. There we go. Right there. There he wow. is. Aww. So my guess would be this is the Grenaldone Pacifica. Almost looks elephant-like. I was just thinking that. Yeah. My dust cloud's gonna ruin the picture. Yeah, no, this is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Bubble cam, though. No. Probably the best picture ever. Oh, 100%. Oh, so adorable. <laughs> Let's see if we can make him look good. <laughs> cool. Oh, it's not dinner time yet. Some people aren't even in the gallery watching. This guy is just like, are you going to sit here and stare at me all day? I'm more than happy to. I want to poke it. I want to do something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy to look at him. Oh, yeah, I know, right? Awesome. You want to do something? Count its respirations. Mm-hmm. Can we see his? I, I can't see it moving. It's pretty slow. Uh, it is. It's holding his breath. Oh, you can just barely see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would make an awesome photo, uh, like profile picture. So this is interesting. Um, I mean, take it with a grain of salt, but um, Wikipedia is telling me that uh, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute has recorded uh, this species of octopus brooding on their eggs for 53 months. Oh, whoa. I don't know if that's true. Um, what species and of Four and a half years? This, this particular Crap. species of octopus. What is it? It's uh, Granuladone Pacifica, oh. I would think, but uh, I am not an expert, so. So they just sit there for four and a half years? <laughs> well, <they did. laughs> it looks like it likes to sit. Bizarre, eh? They do, and then they, they have a word for... Um, oh, uh, they like, what is it? Have, not, uh, oh, he looks even cuter now on the bubble cam. <gasps> oh my gosh, oh, it does it's too. precious, he's a little... Looks like an elephant with four trunks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have all screens going about. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. Please tell me how many people are watching this right now. <laughs> Not enough. Um, we have 69 people watching right now. That is awesome. Oh, 70. So oh, people are calling their Climbing. friends. <laughs> It'll go into the highlights and get a lot of YouTube hits after. You think so? This yeah, is highlight after, worthy? After oh, this is 100% highlight worthy. Edits out all your... Uh, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is what we live for in the highlight world. Someone just wrote in that they brood their eggs and then they die. But I don't know. Oh. Yeah. There's, a, there's a word for it. They like, uh, yeah. what is it? Eva, Eva Ness or something? What, yeah. That's not it. It's something Semel like Paris. that. Though. It's similar to effervescence or the effervescence. scientific word for yeah. If you If you're talking about a fish that like does its thing and then dies, like uh, the salmon in, on the Pacific, it's called Semel Paris. Okay. I know the, the octopus, they like degree. They like, yeah. They just don't move and they just, yep. They that's don't, where they go. They don't eat. And they, they don't eat. They slowly oh, degrade away. Now you can see them breathing. They just, uh, SOI just found a, uh, Sebastian just found a third 
uh, Octopus Garden. And uh, where was it, Danny? Uh, Costa Rica? Yeah, Costa, Costa Rica. Rica. And Octopus Garden, what's that? Octopus it's Garden. It's where oh. there's just like thousands of octopus that gather and brood their eggs, and they just sit there and like oh. for some... years and years at a time, and they all they return to that spot to, to brood. There's one off of Monterey Bay. I think there's one off of Puerto Rico, and then there's they just found the one off of Costa Rica. And it's just like never-ending octopus. Like you can do survey after survey after survey, and it's like thousands. Whoa. There's uh, some very diffuse venting. It's an old dead volcano so there's the water's like seven ten degrees something like that yeah, the water circulates down through the old like lava vents and then back back up and when it go like passes through the crust it like heats up but really. it's uh it's a little warmer but it's oxygen port <laughs> This one's like, sit here and take my picture forever. He's not shy. They're not shy. Well, we only got 2,000 meters to wait, so. <laughs> mm, fly, look at pretty octopus. OK, so uh, didn't want to totally just trust Wikipedia. Look it up. There is a scientific article about the brooding period. So I feel a little bit more confident now. It's dinner, dinner, dinner. It is dinner. If you can go eat, the vehicle will be right here when you get back. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can probably both go eat. We're not. Okay. We're, we're just not moving, just, not going yeah. anywhere. I won't touch anything. I won't even sit in the chair. <laughs> I'll go eat. Jake, you can go eat as well if you want. This is oh, the world's he's already best gone. Danny's gone, Jake's gone. Right now, this is the world's best screensaver. Good uh, dinner time screensaver. Yeah. <laughs> so, Megan, you are with us now. How yeah. are you on your octopus facts? Shh, I know some octopus facts. Yeah. So, um, question for you is octopus and squid are known to have chromatophores so that they can change their the color of their skin and, and also the texture and stuff, but did the deep sea octopus do the same? Do they have? Um, yeah, a lot of them can change their colors. Yeah, yeah. they they tend to be more purpley than some of your your shallow water octopuses. Okay, but yeah, I've seen this kind of octopus be a lot more purple. Yeah. So this is a warty octopus, Granulodoni, and so you can kind of see like those little bumps all over its skin yeah what kind of purpose do you think the bumps serve um, in shallow water it serves to work as like a texturization to blend into the bottom right okay um, but here they just kind of look like that oh it's gonna wave hi <laughs> When we first came up, it was posturing. Yeah. And then it's it was up, like uh, it's so small now. Yeah, and the other really interesting thing about um, octopus, uh, they're a mollusk, so uh, related to clams, clams, and right? Snails, yeah. Yeah. So related to clams. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, they're in the same phylum. Oh. So what links them is they all have this mantle. So with octopus and stuff, it's, it's inside their body, right? How would you describe the mantle? Like a... Um, so, well, they have their siphons, and, and those are also structures that are analogous with the, 
the clams and snails, and they usually use those for propulsion. The mantle is basically what we're seeing as like the head right. of this octopus. Um, and you always think of mollusks as having shells. Well, octopuses have kind of like lost their shell, but um, you know about cuttlefish. Cuttlefish still maintain a cuttle bone, which is like the remnant of a shell. Uh, a lot of people know this octopus fact, but uh, octopuses can fit through any opening that their mouth can fit through, which is really interesting. So octopuses have a bird-like beak that they use uh, to eat with, and that, that's the only hard part of an octopus's body. And so as long as that can fit through a space, it can squeeze all the way through. They're also very, very intelligent. Mm hmm. And this um, this particular one, granulodone. Mm hmm. Um, it is. Uh, what kind of depth range does it hang out in? Um, these ones usually are in pretty deep depths, um, between like five hundred and two thousand meters. So, yeah, they're these are deep sea octopuses. Right on. What do they eat down here? Um, they'll they'll prey on small crustaceans and uh, fish if they can catch them. Pretty much anything that they they can consume. Well, they'll eat the rat tails. Uh, well, you know, if there was a dead or dying one, sure. Uh, it would be very hard for this octopus to like take down a rat tail. Finally, a respiration. That's the first one since we've been here. <laughs> <laughs> they don't well, need to breathe that something? much. Once every 10 minutes? That's yeah. Well, you know. Crazy. Life moves a lot slower Whoa. down here. Oh, he's stretching. Oh, good stretch, buddy. This is, you gotta do your octopus yoga. <laughs> <laughs> now it really looks like an elephant. <laughs> I'm gonna zoom out just a little to keep him in frame. Right, I can tilt up a bump. Yeah, there he is. He does look like an elephant. So we're saying he. They. How do we know if it's a he or a she? Um, well, that would be very hard to tell from this angle, but uh, the male octopuses will have a modified arm called a hectocotylus, and that is used for uh, reproduction. Some octopus species actually remove that arm and present it to the female uh, during their courting rituals, uh, but that's not true for all octopuses. That's another fun fact. Yeah. That was very evident in the octopus garden, the males, mm -hmm. with the brooding females. But yeah. The males usually had their, I think it was their third tentacle on the right side or something. Like yeah. That. So it's modified. So all octopuses have a modified tentacle or just some of them? Uh, I believe all of them have some sort of form of that. Uh, they might not all look the same. Like, you know, not all uh, species have similar reproductive structures. Are they mostly on the same tentacle, or does it...? Um, yeah, I'm assuming so, yeah. Right on. You never quite know what we're going to see. Mm hmm. But we do love some octopuses. I think they're most people's favorites. They are quite fun. And they've got those cute big eyes. I mean, oh, how I can you say no to that? Yeah. I don't believe we've had an opportunity to study one for this. Yeah, this one's a very uh, cooperative. Yeah, they usually dart out of there pretty quickly. 
Well, usually we have some other. We're not waiting on yeah. the package to come down 2,000 meters. Yeah, we got like <laughs> things to do. Yeah, we have things to do. This uh, hour-long video for my looping screensaver. <laughs> uh, here's a question that's just come in: Is there a way to tell the age of an octopus? Ooh. Um, well, a lot of octopus species don't live very long, um, but they don't have like a hard part that we can use to to like date them. Like fish have otoliths in their ears, which we can section and count the rings in. Uh, determine a fish's age. Uh, octopus doesn't really have that, so no, there's no real way to to age Ooh. these creatures. Um, but understanding their life cycle, you can, based on their size, um, guess quite about how old they are. But you'd have to be an expert, and each species is a little bit different. But your common shallow water octopuses only live maybe three years, uh, and they uh, pass on after they've reproduced. Actually, that's a, another question. So I know like with fish, with salmon in the Pacific Northwest, for example, mm -hmm. we have semelparous salmon. They breed once, then they die. Right. Is that word semelparous, can that also be used to refer to these octopus because they breed once and then die? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say so. Um, some of the other octopuses, like the um, Dumbo octopuses, mm -hmm. they actually lay their eggs on corals and things. And oh. so um, they live a lot longer and they can reproduce multiple times. Um, but these ones will brood their uh, young under rocks and ledges and uh, then pass away after that. So your brooding octopuses tend to be the ones that only reprodu reproduce once. Right. I know we've... Um on the Ocean Networks Canada YouTube channel. If you go to Creatures of the Deep playlist, um, we have Cracky the Octopus. Oh. <laughs> this was a video <laughs> from, from many years ago, and um, we found a rice cooker on the seafloor. Yeah. And I so we were going <laughs> to. Was that you? Were you, you flying there, Danny? No, I, or was, Dan? I was watching. I wasn't on the. Oh. On the, but we found the same teapot or the same rice cooker again. Right. <laughs> Did it have the octopus still in it? Uh, we didn't get the chance to, to, to check. We were. Yeah. So that's that's the punchline. There is that the there was an octopus brooding inside the mm -hmm. rice cooker. <laughs> yeah, she had opened the lid and crawled inside. Yeah. And was brooding. <laughs> that's perfect spot. And, uh, I'd say so. To grow your to little rice balls. Open it with a vehicle, <laughs> and she would pull it shut again. Yeah. So like, no, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm busy. Yeah, they have to uh, keep uh, wafting fresh water over their eggs to keep them oxygenated while they're brooding. So that's why she stays with her eggs the whole time to keep them oxygenated. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're almost doing a wheelie. Yeah. We have an observant viewer from Florida who has noticed that the um, the suckers on mm -hmm. the arms are kind of like offset but that um, maybe there's not that same kind of uh, offset pattern on on other species um, well I ha I don't know I'm not quite sure about that I'm sure that different octopus species like we have different spacing and patterning uh, in the way their suckers are, because that, that would just make sense. Uh, but I actually have not had the opportunity to study a bunch of octopus species so close up yeah. to be able to say that for sure. Um, but yeah, cool. That would be a fun thing to research, you know. Not sure what that information would bring to science, but it's a neat observation. <coughs> Wait a minute, maybe one tentacle is symmetrical and the other one is asymmetrical. Perhaps. <laughs> I don't know.
They have sensors in their tentacles as well, nerves and Oh yeah, their arms snippy and tasty and mm -hmm. Yeah, they they have actually their intelligence is actually intelligence is spread out throughout their body. So like if an arm gets disconnected, it can continue to move on its own mm. uh, for a while, not just flailing, but like with purpose. Um, yeah, and so the arms can actually act independently of each other. So the sci-fi movies are based in some reality where the giant octopus is attacking the boat and they lop off a tentacle, but a tentacle still yeah, that's, attacks the that's a thing. semen. Huh. They have a um, they have a more developed nerve. Do they have like a um, like a neural ganglius? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So much more um, developed, evolved than the other mo mollusks. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they lived longer, they could really, you know, give do us some, a run, yeah, run for, for our money. money. <laughs> yeah, I think so. You know. The ones that they've had in aquariums, uh, there are like a number of accounts of octopuses, you know, escaping it's, their ta yeah. tanks and yeah. then doing some shenanigans around the aquarium and then returning to their tank like nothing had happened. So, so like finding Dory is it's like fairly s scientifically accurate. Oh yeah, that was, you know, something that had happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was one at. Uh, Maybe not, you know, helping a fish escape but like consuming a fish it wasn't supposed to. They have some wild stories of the, I forget the name, uh, they have it named the Hatfield Marine Science Center in Newport. And the octopus has escaped his tank and gone walk about. Yeah. And oh, gone back into his tank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't ne never know if I believed it or not. I don't, <laughs> oh yeah, they totally do that. And they, they can survive, at least the shallow one ones can uh, survive quite a long time out of water. You know, they, they just go explore and just, come back. Yeah, go explore. I love that. And they have a natural curiosity, so they'll just sort of do things to keep themselves entertained. Yeah, they would give it, give, I think it was a her, they would give her um, toys to play with. Oh, yeah. Like, like open stuff and, and yeah. like go through m mazes to find a treat. Yeah, the, they really enjoy that type of enrichment. Back where where I'm from. Um, oh, there, oh, there goes. Goes. Whoa, Bye, friend. Bye. That was a cool takeoff. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Octopus <laughs> friend. That was fantastic. <laughs> Octopus is like, okay, we've been talking about me for so long. So, <laughs> it's now in the vehicle there. You see it in the. You go wide. Yep, pulling wide. Uh, it's swimming through the vehicle somewhere. There's a jelly on our porch. It sat still long enough. Everything came to us. See? <laughs> oh, no. Your turn, oh, yeah. Megan. Go find something. Go find something. <laughs> oh, that was lovely. Pretty fun. Yeah, we're... Where I'm from, uh, just an hour north in Campbell River, there is a, an aquarium. And uh, shout out to the Discovery Passage Aquarium, yay! And at, at the aquarium there, they have an octopus. Um, it's a catch and release aquarium. And um, uh, so they take really good they care should, uh, of the organisms. They float up. And they, but yeah, they put fly forward a little bit baby toys for the octopus to play with. Instead of up. Let's go, just give it a little shot forward. That should make it come up. So we now have Megan Putts flying. Danny's got the uh, Z bias adjusted really close to neutral. So if you turn the Z bias lever, see where it says minus 27 right now? You turn that down to like minus 20, it'll should float up. Or you can just turn it off, hit zero Z bias, 
with your uh, that blue button there on the screen. Bless you. Thank you. Then give it a little shot forward. And then let go and it should float up. Should be in the keyword. You might have to go a little more forward. Just hold forward for a second. There you go. Now let go of it and it'll float up. Then you can, uh, once you get a little altitude, you can dial the Z bias back into minus 27 there. And dial that one back to minus 27. That guy there. Other way. That will make the uh, vehicle pretty close to uh, neutrally buoyant. So because your Danny was stretched out so far, it kicked the vehicle around. It wants to be tail to tail. So you'll, if you want to go somewhere for clear water, if you turn and go to the south, you'll get clear water. All right, the, the adults are gone. <laughs> <laughs> Time for chaos. Time for chaos. So what was that, about 25 minutes of staying on an octopus? It was a long time. You guys just missed it. It was like, yeah, my whole meal. Yeah. It was great. We didn't, we didn't just miss it. We watched it the entire time. But yeah, but you didn't get to... Didn't get to chase it? Didn't get to chase it. I found it. It was good enough. <laughs> That's the important part. Now we got Megan on the stick. Oh yeah. Well, training time. Megan's muted. I couldn't see it because it's blocked by the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I must be on. I couldn't hear myself. A little sp sponges. Um, another sand castle. I had to go and alert all my family members and friends to go check out the stream. <laughs> like, look at the stream. I found an octopus. Octopus is for everybody. I believe it's called what they call beginner's luck. Uh huh. Because you sit on the steps, sticks the other day and you instantly find an octopus. Yeah, no yep. one else would have seen that one though. I don't think I would have found it.